This is Barbara Britton introducing the premiere of The Big Party, the first of a new series of live television entertainment right before your eyes and brought to you by Revlon, which tonight introduces Eye Makers a la carte. The spotlight is on an entirely new line of products designed to enhance the eye, the better to see and to be seen at The Big Party. And now here is your host for the night, Mr. Rock Hudson. Hello, is that you, Tallulah? Yes, this is she. Are you busy, Tallulah? Did I disturb you? No, darling, not at all. I was just sitting here going over some scripts for a play I might do. But I can't find anything that's really me. You know, of course, they wanted me to play Peter Pan. <laughs> uh, but I, I had to turn it down. I don't fly. You know. <laughs> it's my sinuses, darling. I've had hundreds of x-rays, and all the doctors say that I need an operation, but I haven't had the time. So I just tell the doctors to touch up the x-rays. <laughs> It's worked out quite well, really. Who is this, please? This is Rock. Rock? Oh, just a moment, darling. <laughs> ah! <laughs> yes, <isn't> it, darling. <laughs> Hello, darling. <laughs> what a lovely surprise. Uh, what are you doing in town, Rock? Well, I, I'm here for the opening of my new picture, and I'm here in a little room at the Waldorf, and I thought we'd have a little party tonight. Oh, lovely, darling. Am I the party? Oh, well, I was thinking more of a group. Oh. <laughs> a group? What is it, a party or therapy? <laughs> no, Tallulah, I did think of you first. I thought you might know who else is in town we could round up. Why, of course. Uh, leave it to me. I'll gather some very interesting people for you. Would you? That'd be fine. Any time after dinner. Oh, by the way, would you have dinner with me, Tallulah? Oh, by the way, I would. Shall we say at the colony? Wonderful. Shall we dress, darling? Of course, darling. It's not that kind of a colony. <laughs> Pick you up in an hour. Wonderful. I'll be ready. Bye. <laughs> oh, what a... Attractive man he is. I could really make plans for him if I hadn't already decided to become a maid at the Rockefellers. <laughs> uh, Miss Esther Williams, please. Oh, she's down at the pool. Well, will you ring her there? Thank you. Hello, Esther. Yes, this is Tallulah. Uh, are you busy? Tallulah. Uh huh. How are you? No, I'm not busy. I'm just enjoying my pool. And naturally. <laughs> Give my regards to Lord Bridges. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, Esther, do you spend all of your time underwater? Well, no, dear, I don't. I do like to swim, though, don't you? Well, I've never had very much to do with water, no. <laughs> Oh, uh, what's on your mind, Tallulah? Uh, well, darling, if you could uh, get your web feet out of the pool <laughs> and the water out of your gills, I have a very interesting invitation for you. Well, what sort of an invitation? Well, darling, Rock's in town, you know, Rock, Hunter, uh, Rock Hudson, and he's uh, giving a lovely little party at the Waldorf. Nat, she'd like for you to come. Will you be there? Oh, yes, if Rock Hudson's going to be there. Oh, yeah. you couldn't keep me away. Esther, remember, he called me first. <laughs> They all call me first when they come to New York. Gary Cooper, Clark Gable, Cary Grant. Peter Stuyvesant. <laughs> Isn't she sweet? Are we dressing, Tallulah? No, come as you are. <laughs> I don't know why I asked her. Oh, well, I suppose it's the trend of the times. After all, Eisenhower invited Crutes Chop. <laughs> Hello, Earth. <laughs> Hello, 
Hello, Mr. Mortsall, please. Mr. Mortsall? Yes, sir. <laughs> this is Tallulah Bankhead. Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> At ease. Look here, darling, we're all meeting late tonight. Uh, can you join the party? Oh, I don't join any parties. I'd be happy to sign a petition, though. <laughs> Oh, no, young man, you've got it all wrong. Listen, darling, Rock Hudson's in town, and you're a very good friend of his, so he's giving a party tonight. He wants you to come naturally. It's at the Waldorf. Well, the Waldorf, huh? The high-rent housing project for ex-generals, ex-presidents, right? Yes. Well, with lines like that, you're going to be the life of the party, darling. I don't mean the Republican party. Can you make it? Uh, is this formal? Yes. Black sweater and tie for you, darling. <laughs> good, you'll make it. Oh, such a bright young man. Mm, uh -huh. He's one of our new intellectual comedians. Ah, uh, for me. I understand that when he reads a newspaper, he actually starts on the front page. Uh. <laughs> Hello, Miss Lisa Kirk? Yes, this is she. Hello, Lisa. Tallulah. Well, Tallulah, of all people. Well, you sound so surprised. Did you think I was gone? <laughs> Not at all. I'm just happy to hear from you. Well, I'm happy to hear from you, too, darling. I haven't seen you since I caught your wonderful act at the pier. You look really lovely with your beautiful gold hair and those long white gloves and that lovely chiffon handkerchief you kept waving to the audience. <laughs> Tallulah. Are you sure you aren't thinking of Hildegard? I never think of Hildegard. <laughs> Listen, Lisa. Yes, dear. Uh, Rock's giving a party this evening at the Waldorf. Naturally, you'll come, won't you? Oh, I'd love to see Rock and you too, Tallulah. Well, lovely, darling. We'll talk some more about your career, and I'll hear all about your singing. How's it coming on? Oh, very well, Tulu. <laughs> all I need to reach the heights is a Greek millionaire with a yacht. <laughs> see you later. Yes, lovely, darling. A Greek millionaire with a yacht. How callous can you get? <laughs> ah. Hello? <laughs> Mr. Sammy Davis, Jr., please. Well, this ain't Johnny Mathis. <laughs> Hello, darling. This is Tallulah, Sammy. Oh, Tallulah who? How many Tallulahs do you know? Oh, I know who this is. This is Tallulah, the magnificent stage actress. Tallulah, fantastic nightclub performer. Tallulah, the scintillating motion picture star. And last but certainly not least, Tallulah, the marvelous song stylist. Ah, oh, how sweet, Sammy, of you to mention my singing. Do you really remember my song yet? Remember it? I'll be seeing you in all the old buildings. Oh, that's beautiful, Sammy. And just for that, you've got to come to a party tonight. Rock Hudson's giving one to the Waldorf. He'd love for you to come, will you? Sure, if I can get the whole burn out of my pants. <laughs> <laughs> well, say it again, Sam. I'll be seeing you in all the old <laughs> That this is heart of mine embraces, embraces all is <laughs> See you later, Sammy. Oh, what a sweet... <laughs> Revlon presents the premiere of The Big Party, starring some of the most glamorous names in show business. Tonight's guests, alphabetically listed, to avoid temperament, of course, are Tallulah Bankhead, Sammy Davis, Jr., Lisa Kirk, Carlos Montoya, Mort Sal, Esther Williams, at the piano, Matt Dennis, and your host, Rock Hudson. Barbara. Hey, Barbara, you're 15 minutes late. Aren't you coming over? Oh, Rock, forgive me. I'll be there in a few minutes. I'm just putting on the, on the finishing touches. Okay, hurry up. You better hurry. This is the kind of an evening I wouldn't miss for the world. 
And it's the kind of an evening when every woman wants to look her very best. After all, to us, what could be more important? Because looking wonderful and knowing it is the secret of a woman's self-confidence. You know, when you look wonderful, you feel wonderful. And the secret can be the makeup you use. And there's no makeup as flattering as Touch and Glow by Revlon. When you wear it, it's almost as though you lived in candlelight. Have you ever smoothed on Touch and Glow liquid? It gives your skin a delicate glow of color, and it blends so beautifully that you can't look over made up. And if you want a flawless velvet finish the way I do, you use matching loose powder. The softest, sheerest powder you've ever used, and it clings for hours. Later on tonight, when you want to touch up, you have Touch and Glow pressed powder in the exact same shade. Remember, Revlon Touch and Glow liquid makeup, loose powder, and pressed powder. Because when it's important to look your very best, Touch and Glow is the makeup for you. The drinks are ready, Rock. Oh, thank you. I'll be right back. Excuse me. Fine. <laughs> Matt, can I sell you one of these? Yeah, I only have two hands, Rock. Open wide, Mr. Dennis. <laughs> wow, I'll tell you. <laughs> Sammy, how about a drink? Well, well if it isn't man as the butler. <laughs> <laughs> I got one here. Okay. Call one. Sammy, I haven't seen you since that night at Puccini's restaurant out on the coast. Oh, you mean Sinatra and Lawford's place? <laughs> yeah, I had dinner with Pete and Frank the other night. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How is Frankie? Friendly, Rock. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a funny thing about Frank. This guy, I admire him so much because not only is he a great guy and a great buddy, you know, yeah. but he is such a, he's our leader, number yeah, one. You know, yeah. But he is such a man amongst men. Yeah, yes. Not bad among women either, I hear. Sammy, I, um, you know, I don't go to nightclubs very often, but I, I did catch your act a couple of times. Would you do me a favor? What? Would you do some of those things I saw you do at the Moulin Rouge? You mean you want me to do a number? Yeah. I thought you'd never ask me. <laughs> I've been here for 10 minutes, nobody asked me to sing. Oh, Clear the way. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. Sing a song from the picture. What picture is that, Matt? <laughs> Barney and Matt. Thank you, sir. <laughs> okay, let's do a uh, let's do a little something like Gershwin about this tempo. Cool. Uh. Yeah. Now you guys are gonna have to help me out a little bit, okay? Here we go. It ain't necessarily so. Now answer me back. It ain't necessarily so. The things that your preacher is liable to teach you, it ain't necessarily so. Little David was small, but oh my. Here we go. Little David was small, but oh my. He fought big Goliath, who laid down and dieth. Little David was small, but oh my. Watch, it's tricky now. Ha now. Ha now. bum bum dum bum 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 Worst thing I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> oh, Jonah, he lived in the whale. Here we go. Oh, Jonah, he lived in the whale. For he made his home in that fish's abdomen. Oh, Jonah, he lived in the whale. I used to be one of the high lows. <laughs> I'm preaching this sermon to show. That it ain't Nessa, ain't Nessa, ain't Nessa, ain't Nessa, ain't Nessa, silly. So. You can stay. I can stay. What do you think of the scene, or is it too early to judge? I don't know, I just got here, but it's, it's a little different than the West Coast, right? It's a lot different than the coast. It isn't everybody, because everybody's kind of the same, but... Yeah. You know that thing out there? I mean, there's some people with identification. I mean, when they come in, they're really like with both feet. You know yeah, that thing? Yeah, it, it, it's, it's sort of an, a, you know, a thing, right? Some of them, right. You just know when they're there. Yeah, you know, it's when they're there. it's character identification. And it's, right. this happened to me a couple of... 
Oh, about two weeks ago. We were at the Sands and I had a couple of days off and I came in LA and they had a party. And like, I went, I mean, I gotta tell Brock about this. Brock, Tallulah, you gotta hear this. I went to a party out on the coast of a couple of weeks ago and all of the real big pro type people were there, the actors, and everybody had an entrance. You know, it was yeah. kind of funny. <laughs> like Jimmy Cagney came, big. <laughs> All right, all right. Now, what's the big idea mm -hmm, of inviting a party, gathering, and you didn't invite me till the last minute, you dirty... <laughs> No applause, just on, throw money, that's all. <laughs> and then Marlon Brando came, which was a surprise, because he came like you're dressed up tonight. He came in your outfit. Those are my people. <laughs> <laughs> Marlon Brando. Off. <laughs> Off. Uh, uh, I don't want to stay. <laughs> And then, and then Jerry Lewis was like the last to arrive. Most of the group was there, Tab and Sal and everybody. And, and then, <laughs> and, and Jerry was the last to arrive and naturally he came in very quiet, you know, very chic as he is in real life, Jerry Lewis. Hello, hello, it's nice to see you here. Swinging boys, huh? Yeah. Two singers. You know, Frank. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, Let me get by with mattresses. <laughs> uh, uh, let's uh, do a little all the way, and we'll start with Nat Cole. Good Nat start. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Great. Yeah. You pick a key. <laughs> when somebody loves you, it's no good unless she loves you all the way. <laughs> Happy to be near you When you need someone to cheer you All the while uh, Let me see who else we should Tony do. Bennett. Tony yeah. Bennett. Tony Bennett. Tony Bennett? Come on. You sure he's not here? <laughs> <laughs> Taller than the tallest twin <laughs> It's gotta feel as deeper <laughs> than the deep blue seas. That's how deep it goes if it will. <laughs> I think we should do Von Monroe. One Von Monroe. Oh, yeah. When somebody needs you, it's no good unless she needs you. All the way <laughs> Through the good old years Yes, and all those in between years Come what may <laughs> It's there, pick it out Stop, <laughs> uh, uh, just not Frank? Okay yeah, right. For who knows Where the road Only a fool <laughs> But if you let me love you It's for sure I'm gonna love you Oh And a ring-a-ding <laughs> Armstrong. No, okay. no, 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 no. Hey. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Got my here. When somebody needs you, it's no good you. Oh, all the way you gotta do that, yeah. Mm, through them good and lean years, mm, and them in between years. Oh, that, Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 The owner of Cool.
cookies hang out, okay? <laughs> I gotta get an attitude here. All right, baby, give me something there. It's been my key, honey. Yeah. Well, who knows? Well, the road will lead us. Only, only a fool will dance. But if you let me love you, it's for sure I'm a gonna love you. <laughs> now, ain't that a kick in the head? <laughs> going in the show business? No, I happen to be a mining engineer and I smoke for a living. <laughs> <laughs> what have you been doing lately, Sam? I've been doing what everybody in the world's been doing. I've been being bugged by the World Series, mm -hmm. you know. Uh... Now what have you got to say about those giants? Well, I'll say the same thing this year that I said last year. Wait till next year. <laughs> yeah. We'll come back. I hear someone mention my beloved giants. Well, I didn't know you were interested in the national pastime. Darling, I am the national pastime. <laughs> May I tell you how lovely you look tonight? May you? I insist. Come on over here, darling. Excuse us, gentlemen. Of course. Now, what were you saying? Ah, oh, yes. How lovely I look. Oh, please go on. Well, your gown is beautiful. Is it French? No, no, no. I have a special designer all my own. I keep him under lock and key. There's only one dress like this in all the world. I'm glad you like it. Oh, I love it. It's Good. beautiful. Just beautiful. Hello. Hello. Well, if it isn't already right young. <laughs> Let me take your coat, Esther. Certainly, Ross. Let me have your coat, Esther. I uh, hope you have a bathing suit on underneath that dress, darling, because I'm going to rip it right off your back. Where did you get your dress, Salula? Yours is a copy. Mine is the original creation. Well, if anybody'd know about the original creation, it would be you, dear. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just a sudden minute. Now, Rock, you're an honest fair man, darling. We'll leave it to you. Tell us now, which of us looks better in this dress? Oh, I'm I don't be unbiased, a coward. Unbiased opinion. Oh, Come on. I, uh, well, I, this is Harry Carey. I, 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 uh, 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 well, uh, uh, Tallulah, uh, that gown makes you look younger and more glamorous every day. And Esther, uh, that gown makes you uh, more mature and more sophisticated every day. And my name is Dick Clark, and everybody dance. <laughs> going to break up this sister act. If you'll excuse me, I'll go home and change my dress. Oh, has Robert Hall opened this late? <laughs> oh, don't feel too badly about it, darling. It's happened to me before. I once went to rehearsals and Carrie Grant and I were wearing the same slacks. <laughs> <laughs> Could they tell you apart? Oh. My car's downstairs, dear. May I drive you home? <laughs> you already have, Tallulah. Bye. <laughs> Oh, don't hurry back, darling. Isn't she depressing? What do you mean? She's so beautiful. <laughs> Come on over here, sweetie. And let's get back to... Oh, I'm sorry, darling. Just oh. lucky. Give me another one, will you, baby? Put it behind your ears, will you, darling? There. <laughs> yeah. Here. <laughs> now, let's get back to our original conversation. Fascinating one, me. Well, uh, Tulu, as I was saying, um, I was proud to be seen with you tonight. You're such a wonderful dinner companion. I enjoyed those two hours listening to you. I mean, talking to you. Uh, it's, a, it's a nice change. It's such a welcome change from those young, beautiful girls. I mean, I'm comfortable 
being with you. It's, uh, it's like putting on an old shoe. <laughs> oh, no, that's not it. How could anyone look so clean and talk so dirty? <laughs> well, Tallulah, maybe I'm saying this badly, but I've been an admirer of yours for many, many years. Isn't there one many, two many in there, darling? I'm trying to say that I, that I saw you in the theater for the first time when my mother and father took me. Oh, Start again, darling. I don't seem to be doing very well, do I? <laughs> Can I play you a compliment? It's uh, about time, Buster. <laughs> I'm truly a great fan of yours, and I'd like to get to know you better. Well, what is it to know, darling? My life is an open book, and I hate the chapter I'm on this minute. Well, you know, it's funny. I never saw you in Hollywood. You were in pictures, weren't oh, you? Oh, don't be ridiculous, darling. I uh, happen to be in the star of a very great motion picture called Lifeboat. Lifeboat? Uh-huh. Was that a talkie? <laughs> Mr. Hudson? I will pay for my half of the dinner and settle with you later. Hello there, how are you? Oh, Join the party? Here, have a drink, darling. Oh, again? Well, I'm really going to have some lunch. Oh, Isn't our host a charmer? But you know, he really is a naive child. You would have the person to say to me, was Lifeboat a talkie? Was it? <laughs> Ralph, what's happening over here? Can't you see, Warren? Oh, well, yeah, I dug that in front. Right away. <laughs> sure, where's Barb? Oh, she's over there by the television set. Do you think it'd be all right if she turns it on? Oh, sure. Go, Barb. Thanks, Mort. I'm having a wonderful time, and it's a great party, but there's a special news bulletin that I must watch about a revolution in fashion. Behold! The height of excitement touches a woman's face. Fashion lifts the look up. Up, up, up from lips to eyes. Now eye makeup comes of age with Eye Makers a la carte by Revlon. From Revlon, who opened a new world of color for your lips. Eye Makers a la carte. The most exciting collection of new ideas and colors in eye makeup you ever seen. Vogue says your eyes are taking over because with eye makers a la carte you can take on a thousand and one different looks. The morning, noon, night, anytime. It's the new easy way to make the most of your eyes. Revlon calls it the look. Now see the look in action. Look this girl in the eyes. Remember her. She has the look for morning. When the light touch is the right touch. Here's the same girl and the look at noon. Here eyes have subtle accents, perfect for daylight hours. And now, with a change of color, see how easily the look changes for cocktails. Her eyes a little bit brighter, a little bit bolder. And here's the look for a gala occasion. She goes all out with eyes as sparkling as her jewels. Doesn't the look work like magic? With Revlon's Eye Makers a la carte, you can take on new personalities and new look every time you change your costume or your mood. Bring on the Eye Makers! <laughs> You've never seen such a collection of new colors and exciting ideas for eyes in your life. New liquid eyeliner is in 12 shades like heavenly blue, mystic black, dazzling emerald, new eyeshadows by the dozen. Mossy greens and romantic violet, rare turquoises, new shimmering frosted colors, and everything from liquid eyeliners to roll on mascaras, and new precious touches of gold, silver, platinum. Now, eye makeup has come of age. So make the most of your eyes. Get the look and get it tomorrow with Eye Makers a la carte by Revlon, of course. Oops. I'll talk to you later. Something's going on. designer could build you something like this, darling? Uh, 
dive in, Doc. <laughs> Dive on the rock. <laughs> what did I do this for? I haven't changed so many times since I was six months old. Sorry about that. Okay. Uh, Chick style, you know. What else? You know, Mort, the first time I saw you was when you were appearing at that nightclub in San Francisco oh. called The Hungry Eye. Hungry Eye? Sure, that's home style. <laughs> kidding? Preceded by the starving me. Huh? Well, now, we've all had lean years. It's yes. part of the business. I see. Yeah, but you ain't had none in so long, I can't remember. We had I'm a string of hits, one after another. <laughs> and how about the latest one? I, I hear that the, the, the uh, opening of Pillow Talk went just beautifully, plus the fact that the critics loved it. Well, the, cr group, the critics were very kind. But I was a little worried waiting for those reviews. I heard they can be pretty tough when they want to be. Well, they can. You're They're like right. car heads. I, yeah. you know, I don't know. Uh, maybe it's because they've got like an analytical approach to all <laughs> performances. They you can know. be funnier yeah. being, you know, like skip rope. That's yeah. this kind of company. Yeah. No like it. I am a camera now, guy. What do you kids know about critics, darling? Huh? Well, what do you know about critics? I mean, I still bear the scars from some of my early blenses. Mm -hmm. When I played Cleopatra, the band critic said, Tallulah, as Cleopatra, sailed down the Nile on her barge and sank. Well, <laughs> what, about that one? what about that one about King Lear? Remember the one about King Lear? Tell it, baby. Well, uh, it said, uh, the man played the king as if you were afraid somebody was going to play the ace. <laughs> yeah, well, listen, they always, but with Shakespeare, they always have fun. Once it was a stock company that did Hamlet, and, you know, the debate had always gone on as to whether, uh, you know, Bacon or Shakespeare wrote the material. So after this particular play, the next morning, the critic said, let's dig up both graves, and the man who turned over during the night obviously wrote the play. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the, you know, it's a strange thing with me, because I do mostly nightclubs, you know. Yeah. Uh, I'm a saloon performer, but occasionally I get into the legitimate theater field, or, you know, I do like a concert. So I was doing a concert, right, in Akron, Ohio, and four minutes before, like, the show went on, no replacements in sight, the mic system went completely out. The whole PA system, so I went out. You know, I'm show business, you know, my dad and uncle show business. So I figured, I'll go out and do a show anyway. Against my agent's better judgment, you know, I went out and I stood there on the stage and belted without a PA system. The next morning, the critic, this one particular critic came out and said, Sammy Davis Jr. couldn't be heard beyond the fourth row. Advice from yours truly, sit beyond the fourth row. Oh, no. no. He, he loved me. He thought I was Well, grand. I'm surprised at you, Rob. Oh, my goodness, I'm taller than he. Being nervous of critics after all the movies you've done. Well, aren't you tense when you open in a new play? Oh, no. I've done so many plays, I'm past tense. <laughs> you said it. I didn't. He's mad about me, but he won't admit it. <laughs> Nothing. Wow. Wow? You know, that's the most beautiful word in the English language, Rob. Well, I can say it in many languages. I can say, uh, you're très chic. Très chic. Well, you're pretty magnifique yourself. Well, we seem to like each other. I like a lot of things. For example, I like New York in June. How about you? I like a Gershwin, too. How about you? Tell him, mister. Tell him. I like the fireside when the storm is due. I like potato chips, moonlight motor trips. How about you? I'm having a real good time. How about you? I must confess that I'm enjoying it, too. What are you doing? Why don't we play charades? Games are so much fun. We can't play with only two. I'll show you what to do. Oh, after all that, I can't think of one. A charade, a charade. Uh, uh, you think of one. You want me to think of yeah. a charade? <laughs> charade. Popular song. More like post <laughs> uh, Popular song. Rock? You should excuse the expression and roll? No, it's an old, old standard. Old standard? Yeah. Uh, Dixie? No. Uh, old folks at home? No. Pillow talk? No. Uh, um, uh, uh, Tiger Rat? No. I don't know. Okay. Oh, oh you're so physical. <laughs> oh. Now, look. It's when we're alone. When we're alone? Look. Of course, 
That's why I didn't I think of it. Said how serenade is tricky, doesn't it? Just stretch your fat house way up in the sky with hinges on chimneys for clouds to go by. A sweet slice of heaven for just you and I when we're alone. I'll build you a swimming pool fit for a queen. I'll have a view of the Hudson that nobody sees. <laughs> In such sweet surroundings, we'll begin the beginning when we're Better join the rest. Must be polite. I like a twosome best, but maybe you're right. Tell me this: Are you serving food? I'm sort of in the mood. Oh, oh. <coughs> Wrong mood. For a snack. 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 Oh, thank you. How about? No, thank you. How? What is going on in this corner, huh? Huh? See the difference? The difference? I mean, Charlene is prettier than ever, but what's the difference? My new secret weapon. <laughs> oh, I think Revlon is brewing a revolution. Charlene, come to the Revlon men's division. <laughs> well, it's a revolution in lipstick. The new look for eyes means a sweeping change in your lips, too. Now your lips call for a special kind of color, fashion's new soft illusions of color that accent your lips and harmonize with your eyes. Lipstick colors are lighter yet brighter, cool yet sizzling. Revlon's Colors Unlimited, the first and only lipstick colors designed to go with the new look in makeup. Fabulous colors like strawberry vanilla, a rich cream-filled pink, delicately colorful. Tangerine Sherbet, a ripe, luscious orange with glory of golden touch. Violet Icing, an unshy violet with a wink of pink. And White a la carte, the lipstick that gives you the fun of creating your very own color tone. Just add it to any shade of lipstick for a newer, more luscious look. <laughs> I'm wearing this new kind of lipstick color, and so is every girl here at the party. So why don't you choose a new color from Revlon's Colors Unlimited? Get the new look in lipstick and get it in a fabulous future on the case. Let's see what's happening with Rock. Well, what's happening, buddy? Well, I don't know. Uh, there's a sweater. I just need one for huh? Oh, excuse me, more. Just yeah, go. Hi, Rock! Hi! Hey, look at that. Well, How are you? well, I'm just fine. Well, it's good to see you. Well, it's marvelous to see you. <laughs> How have you been? Wonderful. Good. I haven't seen you in a long time. That's true. It looks yes, like a wonderful indeed. party you have. Oh, here. it's a marvelous party. Yes. Just a minute. Okay. Attention, everybody. Presenting for the first time at this party, direct from a long run across town, only because it's so hard to get a taxi. <laughs> the one and only Miss Lisa Kirk. Hey, boy. Now, may I present the four boys who work with me in my act? Uh, yes, I'd like well, to. Well, this is Jimmy Brooks. How do you do? Jimmy Harris, Hi, Jerry Rock. Rush, Hi, and Scooter Team. Ciao. Ciao. <laughs> see you around. Okay. Tallulah, I'm so oh. glad to see you, dear. Well, darling, one girl and four men, that's wrong. Mathematically, psychologically, emotionally, and a few other ways I can mention. I'm sorry <laughs> now. I didn't ask Hildegard. Oh. Hello, baby. Hi, Hi Hi, Mort. How are you, honey? Sit down. Okay. Good to see you. Thank you. I'm, uh, I'm really having a little trouble relating to this chic scene. Oh, you are? But I'm going to be okay. Good. Now, what about the four guys? And even McCall's gave up togetherness. <laughs> well, uh, Mort, you see, they had a chance to be the Crosby brothers, but they had the wrong father. That could stop you. Mm. How about a drink, Lisa? Oh, I'd love one, Rock, but I'll get it myself. Thank oh, okay. you. I want to get rid of my wrap. Okay. See you around, Mort. Bye, Lisa. Okay. Now then, what's going on? You want to talk? Oh, sure. Yeah, I always want to talk. Okay. We're about to hear from Mort Soule. Oh, hey, here you are. We're about to hear from Mort Soule on his favorite subject, 
anything. <laughs> well, if you think America's ready, Rock, <laughs> I have a few ill-chosen words to say about anything. Oh, darling, don't just stand there looking young. Go sit somewhere. <laughs> All right, dear. Oh, I'm sorry, Mort. You were saying. I was just saying a few uh, ill-chosen words about anything, well, I guess. Well, press on, darling. <laughs> I thought I really shouldn't do it unless I was in uniform. So I made adequate preparations. And where else could I get at the number one box office attraction in America? The hell is my boat? Rock, I want you to know I appreciate this. It's not. Someday I'll explain to you what this all means. I, uh, I make movies too, you know, Rock. Uh, <laughs> Charlie didn't sell out. I, I, uh, I make movies too. One at Columbia and one at 20th Century Fox. And a lot of you have heard about Fox Studios. You know about that? That's the, uh, they have a great lunchroom there. And have a lot of foreign dignitaries there, as you know. <laughs> and uh, they eat there on the way to Disneyland. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> so, as you know, shortly after that, President Eisenhower declared Spirus Scurus a disaster area. <laughs> well, Khrushchev, as you recall, had gotten American history when I had gotten off the plane. And uh, the president had said, welcome to America. And right next to the president were these people with these signs saying, what have you done with my brother? Remember that? It was embarrassing. <laughs> and then the president said, that's not typical of all our people. Some of them are in the army. Remember, he tried to get the cigar. So then, uh, then Khrushchev came west, and then after that, uh, they had the moonshot. Oh, he met Stevenson. That's right, he met the opposition party. Uh, usually when I mention Stevenson, sometimes there's a hard plaque that say, he can win, I saw the Gallup poll. And then I say, uh, can he be nominated? And they say, no. You know that group? <laughs> well, <laughs> so, I, I got to think of, anyway, so Khrushchev had come out, and then they made the moon probe this week. You all recall that. And uh, General LeMay testified to the Senate, and he said, we don't need any rockets to the moon. We have the B-70, which flies 2,000 miles an hour and will terrify the Russians. Uh, the Russians who look down and see the plane will be terrified, whereas the others will continue. All right, remember? All right, good. Now, so I have, anyway, and making, the movie I'm making is called 48 Came Back from Eternity, and I expect you all to look for it soon. And it's a movie about a doomed airliner. And it's not a kind of like the airliners we fly that just have people reading the Reader's Digest and not creating anything, but it has, uh, it has a lot of trouble on it, and it has interesting people on it. Like it has a, uh, a stewardess on it uh, who has never, she's becoming a woman, which is a dangerous thing to show in movies. And uh, because she's always been on coach flights, you know, and she served coffee and everything, but she's never made dinner on a first class flight, which means a lot to a chick, not to us. So she gets, she's on the plane, we, uh, we open on her with a manifest, and then she's checking seats 1A and 1C, Sinatra and Lawford, who can't get up any farther unless they fly. And then we go, right? And then we go beyond them, and there's an advertising executive who left the office for lunch, but is never going to come back. That's the scene. You know, he's looking for himself. And, and next, then there's a guy running away from his wife, and his wife is back in the tourist section chasing him with a gun because of infidelity. But she doesn't want to go out of her head. There's no use risking more than $80. She's back there behind the curtain. And the, the, the tourist section is half, but you land later. It's a prestige item. She's there, and then there's a pilot who lost his guts in World War II. He's on the plane with his son, Seven, who's worried about his, his dad's idea of courage. And uh, then there's some labor leaders coming back from Washington where they testified to the Senate committee. They're wearing hoods because of reprisals with holes in them. And uh, people think they're a civic group. And then there are some industrialists talking on the dictet. We have that, take. So the plane starts to go off, and the girl says, good evening, and welcome aboard flight 937. I'll be serving dinner as soon as we're airborne. And someone says, there's something they're not telling us. So they, because they're all nervous. So then, <laughs> they cut, and they start to fly. So now, now we're flying, they're in the air, and the pilot and the co-pilot are, are, are fighting. And the pilot, it flies by the seat of his pants. He's an aging pelican, where this airplane talk, and the co-pilot is from a military school. He keeps saying, that's not the way we did it at Culver, you know? <laughs> so, as and they serve the dinner, see? They serve the advanced dinner, and then they have this advanced first-class dinner, and there's bamboo in the salad because of a problem in the baggage room. They do get things mixed up. And they wear wings, though, so it doesn't matter, right? The way the baggage... So, and when they serve the salad, see, the senior employee of the airline gets sick first. It's part of the manual. And the bamboo starts to come up in the senior pilot's intestine. has a good scene where he puts on the jacket, and he comes out from the cabin and he says to everybody, there's a lot of pain here, you know, so it isn't easy for him in his intestine. And he says, thank you for flying amalgamated airlines. See, he's groping. And he takes a parachute and he bails out. I'll just fly <laughs> out and down. And the co-pilot, <laughs> who's an intellectual, locks himself in the men's room. <laughs> and he says, I can't be responsible for 48 lives. That isn't what he says. He says, I can't be responsible for 38 lives and 10 tourists. 
after the stewardess is back there and she's making dinner and her plane is being caught in these updrafts and downdrafts and downdrafts and updrafts. So she doesn't know, see, and she thinks every time it's a downdraft, she thinks they're landing. So she cleans up the galley back there, you know, dinner, and she puts on her heels for the landing. And then every time they're caught in an updraft again, she puts her flats back on and starts to make these chicken pancakes. <laughs> so but her calves hold up all through the picture because it has uniform dramatic quality. So meanwhile, she's got to find a pilot for the plane. So she doesn't want to panic everybody. And she's walking up and down the aisle and saying to people, uh, were you in the Air Force? I wonder if I could talk to you. Were you in mechanical work or the clerical end? And by the time she gets to the end of the aisle, she's really panicked and she's saying to people, you know, is there anybody here who can drive? If so, I'd like to. <laughs> so morale is kind of bad. And this kid wakes up who's seven. He says to his dad, who's a veteran. He says, dad, you're a pilot in the 8th Air Force. Why don't you try and get your integrity back? And his father says, I was a long time ago, I don't fly anymore. So the kid says, well, try. He says, I can't. So this drunken doctor who's just been fired <laughs> from the federal prison system comes up and he says, no man is an island, Captain. Ah! <laughs> so that's exciting. See, I told you it was exciting. So then the pilot says, you're drunk. And the doctor says, I'm not drunk because you can only have one drink cross country. <laughs> so then the stewardess says, well, you may only have one drink, and I may only have one drink, but someday our kids are going to be able to come up here and have as many as they want. That's what we're flying. <laughs> so, then she gets a call from the tower, and the tower says, stop all the debating. You're the senior employee. You've got to bring the plane in. Get the manual and start in. So this girl with small bones and a charm bracelet <laughs> sits down in the cockpit of this 707 and starts to bring this plane in. And she's listening. It's on a split screen, and no one's seated for 30 minutes. And they start to say, they're saying things to her in the tower, like, watch your vertical stabilizer, and watch your mixture, and look out for reverse thrust, and you're overweight. And then she's instructed, according to the manual, to throw people overboard, see if they're, the plane is too heavy. And uh, you're supposed to throw them over in inverse proportion to what they contribute to society. Uh, so it's an ideal plane. So there's a fight in the, in the aisle, you know, a disc jockey and a used car dealer, you first. No, after you. They're fighting. And then she has to split one family. So, the, of course, the instructions of the manual are to throw some over, and if it, there are other members of the family surviving, to give them gum as a compensating factor. Airline <laughs> thinking. And then she brings the plane in, and there's a wild scene in the end as this little girl with these small bones and a charm bracelet is bringing the plane in, and this pilot on the ground is saying, cool it, Janet. And he says, if you follow my instructions, there's no reason you can't function like a real pilot. And she says, I realize that, but I'm afraid that if I project myself too fully into what I think is essentially a man's role, then I may have trouble later when I go out with guys and try to be a woman. <laughs> Something to think about. Now, now, uh, <laughs> I would like to say, by way of finale, that uh, Playhouse 90 wasn't on tonight. If people are still looking. And... Uh, <laughs> We're one of the live spectaculars. We thought the audience was going to be on tape. There was a little misapprehension beforehand. We feel very good now. Playhouse 90 originally had planned to bring you an offbeat production of a great play called The Shrike with Governor Long and his wife. <laughs> that will... <laughs> no, I... <laughs> now, before I urge you all to join arms and sing labor songs... <laughs> It's not that kind of a party. I know, I forgot. Are there any groups I haven't offended? No, we're all in good shape. Thank you, one and all. <laughs> Ward has such sort of an, well, an American style of humor. Well, we understand, and I like it very much. <laughs> oh, excuse me. I want you to meet a very dear friend of mine, Mademoiselle Monique Dalmet. Monique is one of Europe's leading actresses, a star of Comédie Française in Paris. <laughs> Monique, I hear you spent the whole summer on the Riviera. Yes. Was it wonderful? Oh, wonderful. But, oh, that burning sun. I was a uh, sauté. Fried to a crisp, but you look simply marvelous. Wow, Moondrops. <laughs> a merveille, you see, mm -hmm. I don't know why, but Moondrops is wonderful for me, for all of us. You know why? Because dry skin, no matter what the cause, needs moisture desperately, not just a touch or a dab, but maximum moisture, all it can get. 
And Moon Drops actually creates a whole reservoir of moisture. No other moisturizer ever made gives skin the maximum moisture in this, well, exact and scientific way. Oh, that was made so it's nice to go away. That's right, Monique. <laughs> it's the maximum moisture that your skin gets from Revlon Moon Drops. And Barbara, what about the two kinds of moon drops? One for nighttime and the other one so good under makeup. <laughs> <laughs> well, you should use moon drops moisture balm at night. It's wonderfully deep and rich in moisturizing. And for day, you continue moisturizing with Revlon Moon Drops Moisture Foundation. It gives you a smooth finish under any makeup. Oh, but I'm doing all the talking. Tell <laughs> me some more about the Riviera. Yes. You see, oh, I don't know about that little Oh, really? Because I was in Chicago. I was at the Shapery, and she was at the real chic hotel. Oh. I won't mention it. Uh, and the act, you've got to see it, Rock. The act with the four boys is unbelievable. Well, thank you, Sam. I mean it. Sincerely. Well, and she you. does it the hard way without Will Masking. Oh. <laughs> I saw you at the Plaza, Lisa. That's one of the chic places he's talking about. I was right down in the front, and I kept waving and waving, and you didn't see me, I guess. Oh. So I paid my own check. <laughs> I tried, though. You know what I love? I love the number that you did with the boys where you used all the suitcases. Oh, that oh, yeah. one? Oh, that's a wonderful number. Would it be possible to do something like that in a room like this? No, Lisa. Well, yeah. I do. No, it looks like you're on. And you can't say you're not prepared, either. Well, Rock, have props. We'll travel. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Matt? Matt, could I have a little traveling music, please? Sure, sure. Okay. Yeah. This little beaded bag Holds everything I own My lipstick, my passport My bank book and my comb The way I like to live That's all I really need When I decide to make a move I like to move with speed travel light. I like to pick up and go when the spirit moves me. Yes, the travel light. I go wherever I please when the mood behooves me. Before I drag an anchor of worldly possessions, I'd run around in rags. Now I do not hanker for endless processions of gentlemen toting my bag. So a travel light, I haven't got any strings that could ever find me. Yes, the travel light, I never bother with things I can leave behind me. If all the fun's inside, I am, that's where I am, should have been. Cause a travel light, light as a feather, not me. So light it buckles our knees. Hard to have and fun me. <laughs> yes, she travels light. I carry nothing at all. You're nothing's way a ton, dear. Well, after all, a girl needs the basic essentials to simply get around. When we load a plane with your basic essentials, the plane never gets off the ground. Well, my fan in case it gets hot. What's in here, Lisa? What's in here? Well, I need my furs in case it does not. What's in there? Well, what do you got in there? Well, in there I carry my telephone, the one I took from the wall. But why do you carry your telephone? When I leave home, I'm liable to get a call. Oh, that never happens. See what I mean? Why don't you two? Oh. <laughs> Hello? What program am I listening to? <laughs> well, for the past hour, I've been listening to nothing but Tallulah Bankhead. <laughs> what do you mean she's not on? Darling, she's always on. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I need my tent in case it should rain. What's in here, Lisa? What's in here? Well, that is where I always carry shadows. And here's the portable TV set. Oh, no wonder our backs are sore. Oh. But why do you carry a TV set? What do I take it for? To tune in kind of shore.
the guns are in there right now. But where would we work in Africa? There's only one place, the Hilton Mau Mau. Oh. oh. Schweitzer must be having another party tonight. <laughs> yeah. You brought guns? Right. You brought snowshoes? Uh-huh. Your television set? Of course. Champagne and telephone? Champagne and telephone. You brought all those? My gosh. I forgot my clothes. Wow. <laughs> Just a rolling along and singing my song. I'm leaving the blue of the world. Just a rolling along. Out there. It is, and dusty too tonight. 
Well, when it's windy and dusty and damp, it can really ruin a hairdo. This can happen almost anywhere, but especially in the city. But now, even city air can't wreck your hair because Revlon has created the first hairspray that repels dust and dirt as it holds, holds, holds the smartest hairdos in the world. It's Revlon Living Curl. Living Curl's exclusive formula holds and protects your hair from wind and dust and dampness, even in the city air. And Living Curl holds without gummy stickiness and flaking. But that's not all. Look over the balcony at the girls in the party. There are all kinds of women with different kinds of hair. Some have normal hair and some have hair problems. You know, hair that won't stay put or hair that's damaged from changing color. Well, now, one hairspray just couldn't be right for all of them. And that's why Revlon made Living Curl in three custom formulas to hold all kinds of hair. Regular, if you have normal hair. Tinted and bleached, if you color your hair. And hard to manage if your hair just won't behave. Well, I've got to get back to the party, but before I do, remember. Get your custom formula of Revlon Living Curl to really hold your hair, because that's what Living Curl does best. I'd love to hear you, but come on back and join the party. Well, it's very good. Well, Would you like to be the distributor? We have two of buying one, dear. Oh, wait a minute. Brock, I'll get it. I'm close. Okay. Oh, Carlos Montoya. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen. Flamenco guitarist, Senor Carlos Montoya. Come Thank you. Senor. And this is your host, Senor Rock Hudson. How do you do? Shock, Hudson. Y yo que pensaba que el nombre de Carlos Montoya era raro. What did he say, Rock? Uh, well, he said uh, Rock Hudson, and I thought Carlos Montoya was a funny name. <laughs> <laughs> Join the group, Senor. Have a drink. Thank you. Uh, just yeah. before you arrive, Senor, I was just about to tell an hilarious story. I hope I can remember it. It's a bit far out, but we're all adults here. I'll explain to you later in Spanish, darling. Well, you see, <laughs> this uh, Texan, naturally, went to Paris for the first... Dead Eye welcomes Rhonda Fleming and James Arness to the Red Skelton Chevy Special tomorrow on the CBS Television Network. And, and he, no, wait, I haven't finished. And then the text that said, the text said, how much is that in American money? <laughs> uh, oh. What's the matter, senor? You're not laughing. Didn't you understand? I heard it before. There's more fun in Spanish. <laughs> Funny in Spanish. <laughs> senor, I hear you've been rehearsing all day and working pretty hard. Yes on your world tour, isn't it? Yes. Uh -huh. And just because we happen to catch you with your guitar... Doesn't uh, mean we're going to impose on you to play for it. Even though everyone else has entertained. Oh, evening. Yes. ¿Por qué no? Es que soy un cara a la izquierda. What did he say? Why not? What am I, chop liver? <laughs> no! Okay, senor, you're all right. Olé!
I'm going to play Jota. Saying yes. before Carla started play, she said to me, "Research," and I said, "Well, of course, Revlon research. Oh, I love going to the to the Revlon laboratories. I was there just the other day, yes. wearing that silly hat I told you about. Well, anyway, it's at the lab where they're de they're developing so so many wonderful things like well, like high and dry, the deodorant that stops embarrassing underarm odor once and for all. High and dry is the roll-on deodorant scientifically designed especially for a woman." You'll never worry any more about offensive odor or, well, or the risk of perspiration stains. Think of it. Never again that terrible feeling of embarrassment when your deodorant just stops working. So why don't you try High and Dry? The only deodorant that promises you freedom from perspiration breakthrough. High and Dry by Revlon. Of course. <laughs> hey, looks like favorite song time over there. Hmm? Phil talk, yeah. Phil talk. Another night of hearing myself talk, 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 talk. My pillow and I both agree. There must be a girl. Must be a pillow. Must be a pillow talking. I'd better be right. Oh, there must be a pillow talking girl. Play it again, Matt, will you? One more, come on, play it. Play it again. Come on, now, one more time. Come on, come on. You see what happened. It's a good song and all that, and it's from your picture. And you're the host of this wonderful party, but I see that singing it 11 times is a little too much for you. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think so. You don't? You wouldn't say that to Perry Como. What would you say to Perry Como, Matt? Why, you would say to Perry Como, sing some of Matt Dennis's songs, wouldn't you, Matt? I'd like to. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 My favorite, it's violence. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, violence. Yeah. Thanks, pal. You're welcome. I bought you violets for your fur, and it was spring for a while. I bought you violets for your fur, and there was April in that. That's what you did. Oh. Oh. Yeah. 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 You know the one I love. The one that 
Then uh, uh, I make a date for golf, and you can bet it always rains. Everything happens to me. Oh, yeah. 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 Lisa, do you know? Yeah, sing it, Lisa. Well, I'll try. Oh, oh. Help me with the lyrics that I just said on that. Okay. I make a date for golf, and you can bet your life it rains. It did all right. I try to give a party, but the guy upstairs complains. I guess I'll go through life just catching colds and missing trains. Everything happens to me. Oh, I never miss a thing. Yeah. I've had the measles and the mumps. And every time I play an ace, my partner always trumps. <laughs> I guess I'm just a fool who never looks before he jumps. Everything happens to me. My favorite, uh, you know, um, uh, 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 will, will you still be mine? Play that. Oh, you? oh thanks. <laughs> When lovers make no rendezvous, bunk, 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 bunk. to stroll along Fifth Avenue. Yes. When this familiar world is true, <laughs> will you still be mine? Yes. Yeah. Another number for you. Revlon special. Yeah. Here's the next one. Let's take a boat to Virginia. Yeah. Let's take a plane to Mort Sol. Ah. Let's take a kayak to Quincy or Nile. Let's get away from it all. Let's take a trip in a trailer. No need to come back at all. Take a powder to Boston for chowder. Let's yeah. get away from it all. Yeah. We'll travel round from town to town. We'll visit every state. And she sings too. Uh, I repeat, I love you, sweet. In all the 48 miles. Plus Alaska, right? And Hawaii. Ah. We'll go again to Niagara. This time we'll look at the fall. <laughs> Let's leave our hot deer, get out of the rut, deer. Let's get away from it. I really, I can't even shake like Elvis, you know. See, you know, the other day you mentioned that you uh, had been over to Revlon's laboratory. To, I was there to check on something in the men's division, top brass. Hey, look, come here. You fellas, you're not interested in statistics and formulas. Let me level with you. You put something on your hair, right? So why? You put something on your hair for one of three reasons, either to make it lay down or to make it look good or to get rid of dandruff, right? So finally, at last, Eureka, one product does all these three things. It's called Top Brass. This is it. It's a scientific achievement of the Revlon Laboratories. Top Brass makes your hair behave, keeps it in place hour after hour around the clock, yet it's absolutely not greasy. It gives you that nice handsome look that men admire and women really go for. And last and best, there's active medication in this tube to fight dandruff hour after hour, which it does while it grooms your hair. Now look, Revlon's very proud of this product and I'm very happy to be selling it, but if you're a cynic, if you're still doubtful, ask your barber. He'll tell you it's great. Right. Far, far away from it. You know, I, you know, I dig the balance, but I gotta say, I, I dig the rhythm things more. Thanks, sir. Yeah, I, I, hey. Nobody's paying too much attention. Why don't you and I, like, uh, give me a little fascinating rhythm, huh? 
Give me a telephone. Oh, yeah. 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 I was going to sing you a song. How about that? This I like. <laughs> that last step I've heard. Fascinating rhythm. You got me on. That's the sneakiest plug I ever heard in my life. I had a fascinating rhythm. You trampled all the notes. Fascinating rhythm. I'm all a quiver. Each morning I wake up with the sun. Always hopping, never stopping. To find at night no work has been done. You know that was I was happy, but now you're doing wrong when you start to chatter. I'm so unhappy. Won't you take a day off? Decide to run along somewhere far away off and make it snappy. Oh, how I long to be the man I used to be. Fascinating rhythm. Don't you stop picking on me. Give me a little vamp, a little Latin American vamp.
something? It's getting a little late. It's been a wonderful party, Ross. Oh, I gotta to... go home. No, you don't have to go this yet. This time. What? Well, they're all leaving. Well, uh, wait just a second, please. Well, I'm Good night. Good night. Good night, Rock. Good night. Thank you for coming. Don't be late next week. Good night, Rock. Good night. I'm sorry you have to leave. Good night. Well, hurry back, Rock, old boy. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Thanks very much, Rock. Yes, Rock. Glad you Thank you very much. Enjoy it, Rock. So long. Ciao. Ciao. Well. I guess the party's over. What a shame. It's time to call it a day. You burst your pretty balloons and taken the moon away. Good night, Lisa. Good night, Rock, and thank you for a wonderful party. See you soon. Yes, Good night. Damn it. Rock. Special thanks to you. Good night. who will tell you about next week's Playhouse 90. Next week on Playhouse 90, I play the victim of one of the most outrageous crimes our society has ever known, kidnapping. The time, the 30s. The scene, the plains and highways of the Southwest. Be sure to see The Sounds of Eden, written especially for Playhouse 90 by George Bellack. Starring with me are Kim Hunter, Everett Sloan, Dick Foran, Martin Landau, Don Dubbins, Norma Crane, Joe Moross, and Henry Jones as Jess Brown. Next week, The Sounds of Eden on Playhouse 90. That's next week. But don't forget, two weeks from tonight, you're invited to the second big party by Revlon at Greer Garson's apartment with John Bubbles, Mr. and Mrs. Peter Lynn Hayes, that's Mary Healy, Sal Minio, Mr. Mike Nichols, and Miss Elaine May, Martha Ray and Mr. Walter Slazak. Hey, and a uh, mystery guest and a couple of other big surprises. That's two weeks from tonight, Thursday, October 22nd, and all brought to you by Revlon, whose latest fashion first is the fabulous line of eye makeup products, which give you the look. Eye makers a la carte. See you in two weeks. Good night. Milton Herman, Miss Britain's Ball Gown by Philip Ulysses, Revlon Fashions by Sylvan Rich.
Travel arrangements for Revlon's big party were made by TWA, Trans World Airlines.